Patriot Prime Reviews is a channel for adult collectors and may not be suitable for children under 13 years of age. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey, what's going on guys? Patriot Prime here once again with another video. But before I get started with the subject of this video, I want to give a huge shout out to my sponsor, ToyHacks.com. ToyHacks is a company that provides upgrade decals for modern Transformer figures along with reproduction decals for the vintage ones. While visiting Toy Hacks, make sure and check out the Toy Hacks Armory to see their line of Transformers weaponry in multiple colors and toy stages for awesome display backdrops. Each purchase from Toy Hacks earns you RoboSense that you can use for future purchases. You can check your balance anytime in your cart. Toy Hacks is a company run by collectors for collectors, so make sure and check out ToyHacks.com and tell them Patriot Prime sent you. Now, on to the review. The featured bots in this video is the 1984 Generation 1 Minibots. Yes, the original little Transformer toys that helped kick off the entire toy line. And what was cool about these guys, they were easy to pick up with your allowance as a kid. They only ranged anywhere from three to five dollars. Very affordable and easy to find. I can always see these guys on the pegs at my local Roses and Kmart back in the day. Now, with these guys being part of the initial wave of the Transformer toys, they appeared heavily in the animated series and Marvel comic books where they were portrayed as major characters, especially figures like Bumblebee and Braun here that actually continued on pretty much all the way through season three. So I kind of got inspired to take a look at these guys after reviewing Hubcap yesterday, and I thought this would be a great trip down memory lane. So without further ado, let's take a look at these fantastic Transformer figures that kicked off one amazing toy line. And welcome to Patriot Prime Reviews. <laughs> Now we'll start the video off by taking a look at the Minibots in their vehicle modes. And from left to right, we have Brawn, Bumblebee, Cliff Jumper, Gears, Huffer, and Wind Charger. And let me tell you, back in the day, these figures were so much fun to play with. The vehicle modes were very durable. They had easy transformations. And man, I just had so many adventures with figures just like these. That's why it's so hard to find the original old G1 toys in good shape. Fortunately, a lot of these have been reissued. Now, we'll start things off by taking a look at Braun first. Braun here is some kind of off-road vehicle, and he looks really good. Lots of molded details on the figure. As you can see, mine's a little loose, but you got the molded in windows, the door handle. I love the front with the chrome. G1 was all about the chrome. A little Autobot sticker there on top, spare tire on the roof, little light details, a roof rack. I just, I love how much detail is in some of these guys. He has nice hard plastic tires that roll really well. Like, like I said, these guys are just fun to play with. Now, transformation to Braun, he is the more complicated of the group. First thing you want to do with him is you're going to bring the legs down. Now they will catch, so you want to make sure you get the legs down. And now you've got these little door panels. You're going to pull these out. Make sure the legs are straight across here, so you got some clearance. You'll know, pull these doors out. Mine's going to be a little stubborn. It's been a long time since I fooled with these figures. So after you pull the door panel out, you're going to flip it up, and you're going to see this little chrome arm right there on the inside. So bring that arm down while pulling the panel back. So there's one arm there. This one's a little easier, it's looser. Get this all the way out. Pull the chrome arm down and flip that panel back. And there we have Braun in robot mode. And yes, he is a far cry of what he looked like in the cartoon and comic book. I remember as a kid, I was so disappointed when I got these figures and they looked nothing like they did on TV. 
Of course, back then, I didn't know that they were carried over from Japan and the Diaclone line, but, you know, I still played with them, and they were fun. Now, back to Braun. He's got a very robotic head sculpt right there. He's got a silver helmet that he's known for, black visor, and a mouthpiece, mouth plate, excuse me. He's got these scrawny little claw arms, which is so funny because, you know, in the cartoons and comic, Braun was a bruiser. I mean, he was a very strong Autobot. And this guy, he looks like a Star Wars droid. Stickers on mine still look really, really good. I forget where I got this figure, but I was so happy to finally get one because a lot of the bronze I would find online were always broke. So there is Braun. Next up, also, he, he doesn't have much feet to stand with here. So let's see, get him to stand up, stay. And next, we'll pull out Bumblebee. Everybody's familiar with Bumblebee. He is a Volkswagen Beetle, kind of done up in that squat penny racer style. He's got rubber tires, lots of great details as well. You can make out the headlights, the details there on the hood. He's got the black bumper, black windows, the rub symbol that looks a little rough. There on the back, he's got a sticker with kind of, it looks like a fan. I always wondered what that was exactly. But yeah, there is Bumblebee. Transformation for him. You're going to pull the arms out. Flip this panel up, revealing the head. And pull the front section out. And be very careful, because if you pull by the toes, you can actually pop the feet right off. And you're going to swing those feet down. And there you have Bumblebee in robot mode. And taking a closer look at him, yes, another figure that is a far cry from his appearance in the Generation 1 cartoon. But he's still pretty cool. Now, as a kid, I did not have the yellow Bumblebee. I had a red version. Both him and Cliff Jumper switched collars for some reason. I'm, I'm sure there's a history to that. I didn't bother to look it up. Now, right here, it's funny. I've got fishing line wrapped around his arm. This is way before I knew about floor polish. His arm was really loose, so I took fishing wire and put wrapped around the joint so his arm works. Now, articulation, he's a G1. The arms do a complete 360. Toes can go up and down. Head can go up and down. And that's it. So there is Bumblebee. I wanted to show Braun. I forgot to show his articulation. The arms, they can move up and down. There you go. So let's see. Next up is Cliff Jumper. Cliff Jumper is a very squat looking Porsche, and he, he's really good. This was always one of my favorites as a kid. But like I said, I had the yellow version, but still, he, he's a fun figure and one of my favorite ones from the cartoon series. Lots of nice details on him as well. Rubber tires in fairly decent shape and stickers in good shape. Getting him transformed exactly like Bumblebee. Pull the arms out, flip the head up, and get those legs out. Once again, you don't want to pull hard on the feet because they're just clipped in right there. They'll pop right off. And since these are such old figures, you do not want to break that clip. So Cliff Jumper in robot mode, he is the only one that looks like his animated counterpart. He actually has the G1 face that you see on TV. And I think that's why I always like this guy. He looks so much like he did on the show. Articulation for Cliff Jumper, same as Bumblebee. Arms can do a complete 360. Man, that one's tight. Head up and down. Feet can move. And that rub symbol, that one is shot. So there is Cliff Jumper. Next up is Gears. Now, Gears holds a special place in my heart because Gears was my very first Transformers toy. So I just, I love this figure. I think I got my Gears at a church gift exchange. And of course, my very first experience with the Transformers was issue number three of the Marvel comic series, which featured Gears heavily. So I was tickled with that. Now, Gears here is some kind of pickup with a camper on top. Once again, lots of nice molded details. I love the little vents right there below the windshield. He's got a sunlight, a roof. What the hell do you call that? Sunroof. Here on top. Chrome there for the grill. Plastic tires that roll really, really good. 
And that's about it. Gears, here's one of the more easy transformations. You're just going to flip the back section around, forming the robot legs and feet, and then pull the sides out for the arms. And there you go. There is Gears. And Gears, once again, doesn't look a thing like his cartoon counterpart, except for the dome head and the little red sections right there. His head, he looks like a flat out 80s robot. You got the blue visor, silver head, sticker decals, not too bad. Eh, he's, a, he's a good looking figure, fun figure. I had so much fun with my gears back in the day. Articulation, the arms can do a complete 360. And I guess he has a knee bend due to transformation. So there you go, guys. There is gears. Next up is Huffer. Huffer is some sort of flatbed cab. Nice details on him as well. Love the chrome grill. Got the black windows, the lights there up top. Autobot logo there. Chrome arms. Now, this uh, Huffer here, I actually restored all of his chrome with one of those Molotov chrome pins. So, right there. Big uh, promotion for them. You got G1s. Those chrome pins are awesome huffer here has the hard plastic wheels he can roll really good getting him transform another simple one mine's a little tight though you just want to pull the legs down i don't know why that one leg is so tight but you get the legs down you don't take the cab here you're going to pull it up flip around and it's going to lock in place like so and then you're going to pull the arms out flip them around and there you have Huffer in robot mode. And I got this one leg will not come down all the way. So he kind of stands at a lopsided angle. Cannot figure that out. Do not want to force it. So Huffer, once again, doesn't look a thing like his cartoon counterpart. And his arms are so odd. They kind of have this weird T-Rex look to them. But hey, it was the 80s. And back then as a kid, this also was one of my favorite Transformer toys. Head sculpt, very different from the cartoon, but I love it. Very robot looking, silver eyes, the blue head. Sticker decals on Huffer are a little rough, but man, he's from 1984. Like I said, I cannot get that leg out. So we'll go ahead and put Huffer there beside gears, kind of leaning to the side. And last but not least, we have Wind Charger. Wind Charger is one of my favorite vehicles. I can't remember exactly what he is, a Corvette or a Trans Am. Hit me up in the comments. I know you guys will correct me and help me out with my memory. I'm getting old, but he looks so good. I just, I love the looks of Wind Charger. Of course, he's a sports car. In the 80s, we were all about the sports cars. Black windows, got the sunroof there. I love the details on the back. Fairly good details here on the front as well. Got the chrome grill. And it's just an awesome looking vehicle. And like the others, rolls really, really good. Transformation, his is super simple like gears. You're just going to take the back section of the vehicle, flip those around for the legs. And why is this one sticking? I get nervous when I transform G1s. I don't know why that is sticking. Okay, had to talk nicely to it to get it to open up. So flip the legs down, pull the side panels out to form the arms, and there is Wind Charger, another one that is a far cry from what he looked like in the cartoon series. Now, Wind Charger here has never been one of my favorite G1 robot modes because he just looks so weird. I'm not sure if I can get focused in or not, but never a fan of that face sculpt. I can't tell if he's wearing a hat or if that is, is his eyes or what but yeah there is wind charger his articulation the arms can do a complete 360 and that is it so there you go guys that is the original 1984 lineup of mini bots and now for some quick size comparisons here's the 1984 generation one mini bots with generation one optimus prime titans return brawn War for Cybertron Trilogy Netflix Bumblebee and Kingdom Huffer.
The Transformers 1984 Generation 1 Minibots will always hold a special place in my heart. These little guys here helped kick off my absolute favorite toy line. Plus, I had these as a kid, and every time I mess with them, I go back to those glorious days of the 80s. Now, granted, they don't hold a candle to the new modern figures with all the articulation and fancy transformations, but for me, this is all about nostalgia, and we wouldn't have those great Transformer figures we have today if it wasn't for these guys right here. So there you go, guys, the 1984 Generation 1 Minibots. So, does the 1984 Generation 1 Minibots belong in your collection? Absolutely. You cannot be a Transformers collector without having one of these figures. I mean, these are the guys that started it all, and, you know, Bumblebee here is still going strong. So, absolutely, you see one of these guys, pick them up. I don't care what type of collector you are. If you're a Transformers fan, you have to have one of the original toys. Now, guys, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to click that bell icon to get notified when I upload new videos. Also, if you're in any position to help out the channel, I do offer channel memberships here on YouTube, and I have to give a huge shout out to my current channel members because it's support like yours that helps keep this channel growing. Once again, guys, this is Patriot Prime signing out. Hoo-ah!